Welcome to A Level and AP Physics, a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence. In today's class, we will talk about communication systems from Cambridge A2 Physics. In this class, we will discuss what is bandwidth, advantages, and disadvantages of greater bandwidth. We will also talk about maximum and minimum frequencies and amplitude of a frequency modulated wave. First of all, let's try to understand what is meant by bandwidth. Bandwidth simply is the range of frequencies of signal or we can simply say is the range of frequencies occupied by modulated waveform. Let me explain to you this one with the help of amplitude modulation. Let's say we have carrier wave that has frequency FC and we have information signal that has frequency FM. If we look at this frequency spectrum, you can see on one side we have upper sideband and the frequency of upper sideband is simply equal to sum of these two frequencies. And this side we have lower side band and the frequency of lower side band that is simply equal to frequency of carrier wave minus frequency of signal. Now if we subtract frequency of lower side band from frequency of upper side band we can get band width. Bandwidth simply tells us that there is a range of frequencies occupied by modulated waveform. Even there is a one frequency for carrier wave. Now let's try to understand how we can calculate bandwidth. Bandwidth simply is equal to the difference in frequency of upper sideband and frequency of lower sideband. So we have frequency of upper sideband. So here is frequency of upper sideband and we need to simply subtract frequency of lower sideband. If we subtract we will simply get that is equal to 2 times of frequency of information signal. Now you can see here if you need to calculate the bandwidth even frequency of carrier wave is not given you can still calculate bandwidth by just multiplying frequency of signal by 2. It's very important point. Sometimes in question they will not give you frequency of carrier wave but still they will ask you to calculate bandwidth so simply you can multiply information signal frequency by 2 to calculate bandwidth. So bandwidth is very important concept to understand. Sometimes it is called bandwidth of station. So that is also the same thing. Bandwidth of station means that one station can only operate in that range. No other station can operate. If another station also use the same bandwidth, there will be interference and that is not good. This is how we can define bandwidth. Simply you can say range of frequencies of signal. Let's move on to second part now. Second part is simply asking us for one advantage and one disadvantage of a greater bandwidth. First thing what we need to understand about bandwidth is that bandwidth affects the quality of signal. If the bandwidth is greater, quality of signal will be better. If the bandwidth is lower, quality of signal will be lower. And the rate of transfer of data also depends on bandwidth. If the bandwidth is greater, rate of transfer of data will be greater. And if the bandwidth is lower, rate of transfer of data will also be lower. And if you think about music from FM station and music from AM station quality of music of FM station is much better than AM station because the bandwidth of FM is greater than bandwidth of AM radio stations. So this is how we can write advantage. Now let's try to write down one disadvantage of a greater bandwidth. Greater bandwidth actually affects number of stations. For a fixed frequency range, if we increase the bandwidth, number of stations will go down. It means there will be fewer number of stations. So we can simply say the disadvantage is that fewer stations means less number of stations. So this is disadvantage.
For part B, it is given to us that a carrier wave has a frequency of 650 kilohertz and amplitude of carrier wave is 5.0 volts. We can simply say amplitude of carrier wave is equal to AC and frequency of carrier wave is equal to FC. Question is telling us that the carrier wave is frequency modulated by a signal of frequency 10 kilohertz and this is frequency of signal and amplitude of signal is also given that is equal to 3.0 volts we can say this is amplitude of signal frequency deviation of carrier wave is also given that is equal to 8 kilohertz per volt it simply means that the frequency of carrier wave will change by 8 kilohertz when amplitude of signal will change by 1 volt and the frequency will increase mean frequency will increase when amplitude of the signal is positive and frequency will decrease when amplitude of signal is negative this is very important piece of information we will need this one now as it is given to us that the frequency modulated carrier wave we need to find its amplitude if it is frequency modulated carrier wave then the amplitude of modulated wave is equal to amplitude of carrier wave and in this case amplitude of carrier wave is equal to 5.0 so this is amplitude of modulated wave if frequency modulated wave it simply means only frequency will change so very important thing we need to understand frequency modulated wave means that frequency of carrier wave will change and its amplitude will not change now let's move on to second part is asking you find the maximum and the minimum frequencies of frequency modulated carrier wave so if you look at this frequency modulated carrier wave you can see this is maximum frequency and here frequency is minimum we need to find out these two frequencies if you look at this one i have already explained to you the frequency will increase when amplitude of signal is positive it will increase as you can also see here the frequency is increasing and frequency will decrease when amplitude of signal is negative how much it will increase it will increase by 8 kilohertz when amplitude changes by 1 volt and if amplitude is 3 volt it means the frequency of this modulated wave means the frequency of carry wave this will change by 24 kilohertz it will increase when amplitude is positive it will decrease when amplitude is negative so we just need to understand these informations and then we can answer this second part so we can simply write down frequency maximum this is equal to frequency of carrier wave plus this is equal to frequency deviation we can say this is equal to frequency deviation multiply by amplitude of signal and if we simply plug in values we can find out our final answer this is 650 kilohertz plus we have frequency deviation that is 8.0 kilohertz per volt and if we multiply this one with signal amplitude that is 3 volts our final answer in this case will be 674 4 kilohertz now let's try to find out minimum frequency as well for minimum frequency simply we have this is frequency of carrier wave we need to minus now so we will simply write here frequency deviation frequency deviation multiplied by amplitude of signal so in this case we will get this is frequency of carrier wave that is equal to 650 kilohertz minus we have frequency deviation that is 8.0 kilohertz per volt we have to multiply by amplitude of signal that is 3.0 
false and in this case our answer will be 626 kilohertz so we can write down maximum frequency that will be 674 and minimum frequency of frequency modulated carrier wave that will be 626 kilohertz so this is how you can answer so there are two ways one if you understand concept you don't need to use the formula the second way or we can say the safe way you can simply use this formula to calculate maximum frequency and to calculate minimum frequency only difference is that you need to add and for minimum frequency you need to subtract third part is simply asking us to calculate minimum time between a maximum and a minimum transmitted frequency if we look at modulated carrier wave we can see frequency is maximum here and frequency is minimum here frequency is maximum when amplitude is positive and frequency is minimum when amplitude of signal is negative so minimum time simply means we need to find the time when the amplitude is positive and when amplitude is negative so simply we need to find out this time and this time is equal to half of time period so we can simply say half of time period of signal that is equal to t minimum but in this question we have frequency of the signal fs is given to us we can find out first of all time period of signal so this is equal to one over frequency of signal so if we just divide one by frequency of signal frequency of signal was given to us that was 10 kilohertz and if we divide this we will get this is one times 10 to minus four seconds now we need to find out t minimum and t minimum is equal to half of time period of signal simply we need to divide t s by 2 we can simply say this is 1.0 times 10 to minus 4 and this is divided by 2 if we divide by 2 time period of signal we will get our final answer is 5.0 times 10 to negative 5 seconds so this is our final answer